discussing the nature of the mind is, is certainly a whole lecture series, if not a whole lecture by itself. But just to say, you know, the mind is is a kind of energy. It's it's subtle energy. It's not the same kind of energy that that is used to conduct nerves, although it is in the brain. And, you know, there's alternating current in the brain, there's direct current in the brain, and there's subtle energy in the brain. And to me, that's what the mind is all about. Now, it's, 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 I mean, actually, in my, in my model, we have a lower mind and a higher mind. And you could say the lower mind is associated with electromagnetic energy, because it's pretty dense. And the higher mind is associated with subtle energies because they're more subtle and they're connected to spirituality and our divine essence, which is another whole lecture. And I was going to talk about that maybe at the the very end, but now we're still stuck with this energy, which is physical, but not physical. It's not as dense as electromagnetic energy. It's not as subtle as the most spiritual kinds of energies, but it's, it's um, clearly um, a, 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 it's not even a physical kind of energy. It's, it's more etheric. It's more an, um, an informational kind of energy. It carries information rather than particles and, and matter like denser energy does. So, okay, so, so where we're back to, to uh, okay, so that's where this energy would be stored in the brain. But now let's talk about water. And water is particularly interesting because it turns out that not only can water store this kind of energy, but so can crystals. And we all know that because we work with crystals and we put our intention into them and we we, uh, put our energy into them. We put our heart energy into a crystal. So, so, you know, the difference between water and a crystal, it actually is not much because water has now been shown to contain within its amorphous bulk water, contain localized regions of what we could call liquid crystals. There, it, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a crystal, but it's, it's, it's a liquid crystal. What does that mean? It means that it, it's... <clears throat> It's, so what makes, okay, let's go back and define a crystal. What makes a crystal crystalline is that its components form a physical lattice structure. It could be the shape of a, of a, of a hexagon or a cube or, or a tetrahedron, I mean, diamond. <clears throat> These different kinds of um, crystals and minerals have different kinds of geometric grid-like structures and apparently that's where the information is stored in a solid crystal and since water has these localized regions of liquid crystals which in this case are actually water molecules individual water molecules which cluster together and form a geometric shape uh, hexagonal water and pentagonal water are the two most popular. Uh, anybody o- over 40 or 50, forget how, uh, knows penta water, which was one of the first <clears throat> um, liquid crystal waters that was on the market. They figured out how to stabilize water in that particular geometric pattern, in that particular five ring structure. And, and since then, we know that the hexagonal water is very uh, uh, similar, and many books have been written about hexagonal water. So, <clears throat> in fact, water can form crystals of virtually any size from three up to 100, say. Now, of course, the problem is with the really big ones, big clusters, where you've got 100 of molecules all surrounding like a, an ion that has a charge, a positive charge or a negative charge, um, is that these, cl- these clusters are so big that the ion cannot get into the cell. So this is a bit of a problem. 
uh, but that's a whole you know a whole different lecture. Uh, the, so it's better to have the smaller micro clusters. Uh, and when I did the experiments, I'm sharing my my experimental results here. So you would think that maybe so we have two kinds of waters now: structured water, whether it's hexagonal or pentagonal, and then we have bulk unstructured water, which is predominantly just amorphous water with very few localized regions of liquid crystals. Structured water has lots of liquid crystals inside and therefore can almost be considered a liquid crystal. So <clears throat> I figured that structured water would be more imprintable that it would take on new information from an external energy field, whatever, whatever type it is. So I did all kinds of experiments treating water with specific frequencies of electromagnetic and scalar and sound energies. And, you know, some frequencies resonate with water, some don't. Some frequencies <clears throat> last a long time and some don't. And that depends on, ironically enough, not so much the frequency, but the kind of energy that was used to deliver the frequency to the water. But nonetheless, uh, the point is that water can imprint these frequencies. The information contained in the energy field gets stored in the water. So what does that mean? That means that if you then Expo, uh, give that water to a biological system. Remember, all biological systems are surrounded by water, right? So you put a, a, a biomolecule like DNA, for example, or a cell inside of structured water. Uh, and uh, uh, the, um, the, the information from the water will go into the cell. So the cell has the ability to read the information that's in the water. So that means that the imprinted information is stored in the water because this can last for months and a biological system can still read the information and go, oh, there's 60 Hertz information in there. 60 Hertz is not a good frequency for me. It's going to make me sick, but it's still going to respond to the and read the information because it's there in the in the water so that's that's what i mean when i say storage okay so now we're back to this phenomena of storing information in a water that's structured versus a water which is not structured so structured water remember has a lot of organization a lot of structure a lot of crystalline lattice nature and when you treat water of that kind with a frequency it does not imprint water does not take on the information and does not store it for any length of time and that kind of perplexed me because i thought well this is you know this magic structured water you know, everyone talks about it. it's so good for you it heals the body the body actually it's the same kind of structuring that occurs in nature in in the body uh when the body's healthy and young so you know i thought about it and i realized that the water is so structured the lattice <clears throat> um uh, structure is so rigid that it cannot take on any new information. It's not open to receive new frequency information. Regular water is because it has no structure. It wants structure. It wants information to, re to incorporate and to store and then to pass on to an, another biological system. So that was kind of um, some experiments that I did with structured water, uh, but in conclusion, uh, I figured out that if you want to put frequency information into structured water, you have to imprint it 
first and then structure it. So the structuring can cluster the water molecules around the information and give the information a home so it has somewhere to go and it's just not, you know, like a wandering Jew like I am. <clears throat> right, little joke. 